What's good, Steeler Nation? My name is Jack Sperry, and this is Steelers Talk. We already had a video today, but we have Steelers breaking news here, and this is exactly why you subscribe to Steelers Talk. We break down breaking news for the Steelers every time it hits, so if you want those breaking news updates and analysis, go ahead and subscribe to Steelers Talk right now. And let's get right into uh, the tweets here that came out, the signings. The Steelers have two today, so it's going to be a pretty good video here. First signing, the Steeler, Field V8 reported that the Steelers are signing defensive tackle Jonathan Marshall off the Jets practice squad and onto their 53-man roster. He entered the league as a 2021 sixth round draft pick out of Arkansas. Now, obviously, you know, uh, this guy is not really well known, right? He's a sixth round draft pick. He hasn't had a ton of experience, right? He has not played for uh, the, the Jets this year. He was on the active roster for a couple games last year, four games to be exact, uh, but he has not been on the active roster for the Jets this year. He's been on their practice squad, and we poached him today. And it, in my opinion, guys, he's, you know, he's all right. You know, he's a backup quality defensive tackle, probably not going to get a ton of action, right? The Steelers have quite a few uh, interior defensive linemen already, so he's definitely someone that they're bringing in as kind of a backup piece, somebody that can play if needed, but I'm not sure if he's going to be hitting the field as much because you got DeMarvin De Leal, you got Isaiah Loudermilk, of course you got Larry Ogunjobi and Cam Harrod. You got, a, you got a bunch of good players if you are the Steelers, and I think he's probably going to be more of a backup piece for the black and gold as we head down the home stretch of the season. But let me know in the comments right now, guys, will Jonathan Marshall make an impact for the Pittsburgh Steelers this year? Type Y for yes or type N for no. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So whenever you get an ad break, just go right down into that comment section and answer this question for today. All right. Now, in my opinion, I think that this is a clear uh, Chris Wormley replacement uh, add-on here, right? Chris Wormley towards ACL going on IR here pretty soon. And, you know, it's just, it was, you need to, you need to fill that spot on the roster. The Steelers like to have a rotation of defensive linemen. And now with Wormley out of the picture, it seems like Omar Khan wanted to replace that spot on the roster. And they got this guy today. And, you know, Wormley, he's a good player, man. He's been grading well, according to PFF grading. And, you know, it really sucks to see him go. It really does. He's, he's a good player. It sucked to see him go. But at the end of the day, the, the Steelers defensive line depth chart here, it looks pretty decent, right? Ogunjobi's a good piece. Leal, he, he's definitely got upside. Loudermilk has had his moments this year. Uh, but, you know, bringing in Jonathan Marshall is going to be able to give this team the depth that it wants with, with Chris Wormley likely heading to IR because he needs surgery on that ACL. And, you know, with Jonathan Marshall here, I'm looking at... Uh, somebody that can come in and be a good backup piece if, say, DeMarvin Leal gets hurt again or Loudermilk gets hurt again, right? You want somebody that can come in and play in an NFL game and you know can probably hold their own. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Marshall, you know, he, he's only played in four games, but he played all right in those four games. Right, he's somebody that can come in, hold his own against NFL offensive linemen, and that at, at the end of the day, that's why the Steelers are bringing him in because Chris Wormley is out for the season with that ACL tear. All right, so the Steelers signed another player uh, today, so we're going to go over that in just a second. But first, this show is brought to you by our sponsor today at Fetch. Fetch is a super easy to use and free app that allows you to earn points and rewards on everything that you buy. Scan, physical, scan any physical receipt or e-receipt and you will earn points for your purchases. And the process only takes seconds, guys. You don't have to worry about where the receipt is or what it's on or what's on it. So let me show you how simple this is. You're watching the video right now. All you do is open up the Fetch app, press the orange camera button and snap a photo of your receipt. Uh, then hit submit and you'll see the confetti pop showing that you've earned more reward points. It's a simple process. You can also click the e-receipt function to get rewarded for your Amazon purchases or other online shopping by syncing your email account. You can then redeem those points for gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, and hundreds of other retailers that they have available on their app. Fetch is available on iPhone and Android. Use our link chatsports.com slash fetch and enter promo code chat at sign up for 5,000 points when you scan your first receipt. 
That's the equivalent of a free $5 gift card when you get started. It's a completely 100% free app, and the 5,000 bonus points is only for a limited time. So get started now. That's chatsports.com slash fetch, and enter promo code chat. The link is also in the comments and description of today's video. I love using fetch. Just, you know, whenever I'm going out shopping, I scan my receipt, and then usually by the end of the week, guys, I love Chipotle burritos. Usually by the end of the week, I have enough points to redeem for a Chipotle gift card and then I treat myself to a Chipotle burrito at the end of the week. It's an awesome app uh, to just earn, your, earn, report, earn these rewards and earn these points and get started today. All right, now the second signing of the day for the black and gold comes from former Titans outside linebacker uh, Ola Adeni. A move his agents uh, Rosenhaus and, and Ryan Martha confirmed today. So two new defenders for the Steelers. The Steelers brought in an a, a outside linebacker here, which is an interesting move here in my opinion. Uh, he, the Steelers actually brought him in as an undrafted free agent in 2018, and he was on the Steelers for a while, from 2018 to, 2000, to 2020. And, you know, he, he played quite a bit for the Steelers, right? He has 49 career tackles, two and a half sacks, three forced fumbles. So, you know, this is somebody that could come in and potentially play right away. And, you know, I'm looking at this guy, I'm looking at Malik Reed, you know, he hasn't been playing very well, you know, and then you look at TJ Watt, who they may be looking at potentially uh, kind of uh, bringing back a bit, right, because he's got those injuries. This guy can come in, he's familiar with Tomlin's scheme, he can go on the other side of Alex Highsmith, and he can hold his own for the last couple weeks of this season. Uh, but the big question for me is, is this move a move to deactivate and kind of uh, bring down T.J. Watt's usage, right? T.J. Watt's been dealing with that rib injury. We talked about it in the video earlier today, so if you haven't checked that one out, go ahead and check that video out as well. But, you know, Watt, he's been dealing with a lot of injuries. Could this signing be a sign that Mike Tomlin is shutting down T.J. Watt for the rest of the season. Let me know in the comments section, should the Steelers shut down T.J. Watt? Do you think that they should preserve his health and wait uh, or take him out for the rest of the season and preserve his health for 2023? Type S for shutdown or type P for play if you think T.J. Watt should still play for the rest of the year. Now, kind of going into more elaborate detail here on the T.J. Watt situation, like we know, he's got that torn pectoral muscle. Right, he had the knee surgery. Now he has the rib injury. I mean, the, the injuries are, are stacking up for the superstar uh, edge rusher, and the production hasn't been the same for TJ uh, since he came back from those injuries. So bringing in another offense or outside linebacker that can plug in right away that's not terrible like Malik Reed is to put on the other side of Alex Highsmith may be a good move. And personally, if, if Mike Tomlin had a press conference tomorrow and said TJ Watt is being shut down for the rest of the year, I wouldn't bat an eye and I would be perfectly fine with that. Uh, and you take a look at the injuries for the Steelers right now. I mean, the list is starting to get pretty long, right? Chris Wormley, he's now out with that ACL tear. Kenny Pickett has a concussion he's still dealing with. Pat Fryermuth is dealing with a foot injury. And then you got that kind of longer list there of people still on the IR. Akella Witherspoon with that hamstring. William Jackson III, of who knows if he's even going to play this year, right, with that back injury. Uh, Calvin Austin III is out for the year with the foot injury. Kyle Joseph and, and Anthony Miller the same way with that ankle and shoulder injuries. This is, at the end of the day, guys, the Steelers are getting pretty hurt right now, but it's not like it matters too much, right? The Steelers are, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty much out of playoff contention. In my opinion, these moves are made to address certain injuries. Obviously, the Chris Wormley one, and then TJ Watt, I think they're going to give him potentially a bit of a break. If he still plays, I don't think they're going to play him as much. I think that's why you go and get a guy like Nini. And at the end of the day, I think that TJ Watt, I think he absolutely deserves and needs to heal, right? At the end of the day, he is the superstar edge rusher, best defensive player, one of the best defensive players on the planet Earth today. And you got to make sure that he's going to be good to go at the start of the 2023 season. I think the moves today help that out a bit. That's going to do it for today's show, this breaking news Steelers talk edition. I appreciate you, Steeler, uh, Steeler Nation. And until next time, peace, guys.